Hi everyone, if you are hearing me now, uh, we are from Istanbul as I guess all of you already know because most of us are from Turkey, I guess. But since we might have some uh, people that cannot understand Turkish, we will be hosting this event in English and I will be completely talking in English, so <laughs> please don't mind. Um, if you would like to ask your questions while in Q&A sessions, you can go with the Turkish one and we can translate if we, if we see anyone that is not able to understand, but I guess we have a few, um, so it's better if you can ask in English, it's better if you can. Um, I think our time is, has came, so maybe we can start and the people who came after will understand where we are. Um, first of all, thank you for coming here. It's not like an offline event that we were sitting and like drinking and eating pizzas and like uh, it was cozier, I guess, but it is still good to see many people that are interested in product management and like it is very nice to see people that we know from the different events or like that are friends. Thanks, thanks to all. We are here and we are ready to go, I guess. I am starting the sh to share my screen now. Um, I will be uh, starting this event. So um, let me let me start sharing now. Yes, I guess you are seeing. Anyone is checking if you are seeing or not and Zoom is perfectly working, showing this stuff. So I am sure that it is working. Okay, so welcome again. It is our first online event. So we are a bit excited if we are able to make it or not, but I guess we will be handling. Um, we are onboarded on Zoom and we know like how to manage. Uh, so I think we, we can do this. Um, let me go over the schedule for the night. Uh, this thing I'm doing right now is the welcoming from Product Management Festival, which we are in this community. Um, it will take maybe 10 uh, minutes, but I put 15 in order to make it more uh, reasonable. And then Melih will start talking about sprint planning. He will share his ideas and experiences around the topic that we both uh, selected together then. Uh, we will have a Q&A session uh, as 10 minutes. After that, uh, we will be having a break. By the way, in the Q&A session, we are expecting you to use the chat um, and we will be reading the questions you are uh, asking to the speakers so that uh, not everyone will talk at the same time. Uh, it will be more consistent. Um, then we will be having a five minutes break. You can go to the toilet or like drink a couple of tea. Um, and on this break, we will be sharing a survey that we will be asking questions around sprint planning. How you are doing? Are you doing? Uh, are you using agile methodologies? So that kind of stuff. And we will be sharing its results uh, once we have the amount um, that like uh, if, uh, an amount that we can share actually. Uh, so it would be great if you can follow the chat uh, while you are breaking, uh, yeah, while you are having a break so that uh, we can have the information of this uh, webinar, like how we are doing in terms of sprint planning. Um, once the break is over, Jem will continue and he will share his experiences around sprint planning as well. And it will last 20 minutes like Melis one. Then we will have a Q&A session and then we will be done basically and once uh, once we come to the second q a session we will be sharing a feedback form with you uh, to understand how we did it uh, like overall what's your uh, what was your expectation and if if we would uh, make something better to make us understand because of you are all of you are interested in product management you would understand the importance of the feedback so let us understand how we did um, and this link will uh, come on the second uh, Q&A ses session. Uh, if you can follow up the chat part, it will be great. Um, so what we do, Product Management Festival is a community, a global community that is uh, around the world now. There are many, many cities. And um, proudly saying Istanbul is 
the biggest community in the product management festival overall. Um, thank you for that as well. It was all of us doing that. And that community is basically for product managers to uh, exchange ideas, share their experiences and uh, learn and teach. Uh, while doing that, it is also a good way to like meet with new people. We were uh, we, we we met with each other as the Istanbul uh, local crew that organizing these, and we got very close. And everyone uh, who were joining the previous events also knows that the uh, offline events were pretty good at like talking and uh, meeting with new people. Some of us found our jobs from this community, so it is a uh, good community to, to be in, in Istanbul. And um, for the general, for the global, uh, we have five assets. Um, and I will be summarizing all of them, but you can, uh, you can get further information from the official website, which is under uh, executive circles uh, on the top uh, say, bottom left. So PM report is basically a global survey around product management. Um, it is uh, published yearly and this year's uh, report will be out soon. You can see trends and benchmarks like how people are doing what in terms of product management around the world. It is the best thing, I guess, out of uh, all. I, I love it. So if you can uh, go for it, it, it is great. Another one is the conferences. These are happening twice a year, and these are the biggest events of Product Management Festival, which are most um, mostly uh, having 1,000 people. Uh, for the last one, what, which happened in Zurich, I was there uh, the last year. Uh, it was November, and it was more than 1,000 people, and it was one of the best uh, conferences that I have ever been in. It was very... Uh, very fun and like I learned a lot there. Um, the Singapore one was expected to be happen in this year uh, around these times but it has postponed due to coronavirus but the Zurich one is on this year November so um, I will be sharing this, the discount code in the next slide if you want to uh, go there it would be a nice experience for you. And the PM Nights is basically what we are doing now. Um, the image is from our, one of our previous events. Uh, it was a very crowded one. Um, these are for uh, sharing experiences and the ideas as you uh, came here, you all know this. And the other one is executive circles. These are uh, like PM Nights, but they are uh, most of uh, invite only and they are mostly for executives. So they are a bit more, uh, let's say, boutique. And the last one is product management executive program. This is something like a school. Uh, there are professors and like, uh, there are PMs from uh, very big companies like um, executive C levels. So it is, um, it is a program that, um, that is that you can join and you can see the further information from the website as well. Um, this one is the one that I, I was talking about. It will happen this year in Zurich and the discount code is here. Um, I would like to share it with you privately if you want, if you forget it later, let me know. I can uh, provide that information to you. Um, tonight we are here for the sprint planning and it is our fifth event. Uh, Jem from Udemy and Melih from Netco are both here. I am very glad to have them. They are both very good. We, uh, we are chatting uh, for a while now and I'm clearly seeing that uh, we, are very, uh, we are very lucky to have them tonight. So thank you so much for both of you. Uh, you are great. And I guess the last one is something that you can't read, I don't know why, but I was thanking to the local uh, crew of the Istanbul, these people made this uh, community exactly uh, it, in its place now. It is in Istanbul, uh, we are the biggest community over the global, so um, these people made it. Uh, I, would, I would like to thank them all in order of presence, like you can name them. <laughs> they are both, uh, all of them are very helpful and uh, great people. Um, I would like to thank them again here. Um, that's all from my side. Thank you for being here tonight with us, like sharing this moment. Uh, I'm very happy to see you all. And now I'm leaving my place. And I'm gone. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, Virgil, for the great introduction and the kind comments. Um, let me um, uh, let me share my screen. But before sharing the screen, I see some like familiar faces, uh, friends, colleagues. So I want to say hello to everyone. It's nice to be together with everyone. And so uh, share the screen. I, I guess everyone can see my screen very well, yes. right? Okay, great. Let me. Let me start out. Like a heavily let go branded uh, presentation is waiting you, actually. So uh, let me start quickly. By the way, like before starting into the discussion around the uh, sprint planning, I would like to first like introduce myself, the company, the teams that we're working with, so that you can be more familiar with the concepts. And I will start with introducing myself, of course. And like this, uh, I'll start with a brief introduction of myself in a kind of waterfall style. Not, a, not the best way to start an agile talk, uh, I guess, but still, um, I think it works. And I studied computer engineering uh, in Peking University and had my master's degree as well in the same department, the computer engineering department. And after that, I started working as a developer in soft tech and back in the industry. And after I also like I started development in NITSIS in the ERP industry as well. But then I had the transition to become a product manager, uh, which was far more interesting. And then I worked as a like product manager in both Saibindan.com and Adforus in Istanbul. And like uh, in my last job before leaving Turkey, I was the head of product for Mnachet, and which I had the opportunity to work with a team of like great product managers and designers. And also like in my last job, like for the last one and a half years, I'm working in Letco as a senior product manager. Um, how about let go? Let go. I know it's incredibly popular in Turkey, and like everyone knows, let go in Turkey. Uh, but like, I want to like give some information, uh, maybe that may be like new to you. Uh, let go was founded in 2015 in Barcelona uh, by three founders, Alec Oxenport, Jordi Castillo, and Enrique Linares. And it was founded in Barcelona, and the the biggest office is actually the uh, Barcelona. The headquarters are here. The, all the product. Uh, management the tech teams are in here. Um, we have offices in New York and Istanbul. Istanbul office is really, really small compared to uh, the Barcelona office, by the way, which was surprising for me at, at the beginning. And the biggest markets that uh, the Letco operates is are Turkey and US, and like which is kind of also interesting because like also like Letco has presence in Spain and other countries, but uh, they're not a focus and. We are a group of people like from different parts of the world and like located in Barcelona, but trying to build a product for US and Turkey. So you can see the, some of the problems in there. It's not easy all the time. And let me tell you a little bit about the product team structure. Uh, I mean, product teams by like, product engineering and all of the related people. And um, like the ones who are familiar, probably like uh, people are more familiar with this concept, but uh, especially if you watch the a uh, famous video of Spotify's like, team structure. You are more familiar with that. Um, we have actually like squads fully responsible for one aspect of the user journey. It may be like um, mobile and web. And these squads are grouped together under tribes, like which were defined according to the focus areas of the company. And in each of these like uh, tribes, there are like multiple teams and, and each of the squads include like uh, members from different parts uh, related, uh, related parts and in most of them since like we are mostly a mobile first company uh, the team consists of a product manager uh, an engineering manager who is also working as a scrum master and but also he's the people manager of the developers as well and we have the backend developers uh, iOS and Android developers with DevOps engineers and QA engineers. And also we have a designer uh, working with this, uh, working with this team. Uh, of course, like not all, of, not every time, like uh, we have dedicated team members for all these squads. Like sometimes like designers, for example, or DevOps engineers, uh, the, these members are actually working with multiple teams, but like they actually uh, are in, uh, joining in every like scrum ritual, and the team meetings, etc. Also, in some teams, like according to the team uh, that they were, uh, the, the area that they're working on, like we have the data scientists, data engineers, and front end developers in the web. Um, and the, with, after this brief introduction, I want to like say that I, I worked in like lots of different teams as well, 
like web-based teams, mobile-based teams, like small teams, like larger teams. And the thing that I found is like everyone who is probably watching this tech, uh, presentation read lots of stuff uh, about like agile software development. Maybe you have some official trainings um, and like some of the things are already industry standards and there are like certification programs for that. But still, there's one thing like you never know what exactly works. Um, I know it's not the smartest way to quote Mike Tyson. It will not make me uh, look smart. Uh, I can quote like Dwight Eisenhower or Winston Churchill, but that's true. Like this is the truth. So uh, that's why normally like I'm not like I, give, I, I won't give a speech like a scrum master. Like you should be like definitely with that. This is the book. This is the framework, etc. I'm going to talk about my experiences and like the main principle uh, that we are going to uh, that I think it works and I think it's logical. And also, um, in order to do that, uh, I actually like start with questioning. Like uh, we have uh, that in order to start, like I have like four questions in my mind and I want to share these my experiences uh, by explaining these four questions. And I also recommend you to do the same and while you are trying to improve your like, sprint planning process. So the first one is, are we working on something valuable? Like, and the most important one, and is everyone in the team aware of it? What do I mean by that? So, um, first of all, like everyone, including the developers and mostly developers, everyone wants to uh, need to hope that they have a redirection. They want everyone wants to work on something valuable. That's why like people are doing the nonprofit stuff. That's why like they are doing open source projects. Even and like even if you're paid for it, you want to work on something that creates a value and which brings which increases the motivation of the high performing teams and in order that that's the essence of it like you need to have a highly motivated team that knows that they have a direction and in order to have this of course like you need to have a solid like a proper product strategy um i think it's the essence of it but like it's also a kind of a tricky uh, topic to talk about and it's not the today's topic it's a really long discussion and i will not go into detail about that one but I really recommend uh, for you to read the to read Marty Kagan's articles on the Silicon Valley Product Group's Insights blog, and this is a really really incredible blog. By the way, like Marty Kagan, Marty Kagan is an incredible guy. He has this uh, book called Inspired, and he has lots of he posts lots of valuable stuff. I really uh, I strongly recommend it. So um, okay, like how are we uh, doing it in Let Go? How are we trying to achieve this on Let Go? Um, I assume like most of you are already familiar with the OKR framework, the objectives and key results that were that became famous after Google. And like if you're not familiar, like you can don't really look for it. But the uh, the idea is to have goals for like starting from the top as a whole company. You should have the objectives like as a like company objective and the product strategy, product objective for the whole company. And then like we, in each of these tribes we set the objectives and the key results to measure these objectives that are success for each tribe. And like, for example, we have some tribes working on different parts of the product. Like for, we have a trust and safety uh, tribe for our, who are working on this kind of like uh, user management issues, the trust and safety issues, or right, sometimes like they can be like tribes specialized on verticals like cars, real estate, and multiple teams are working on that. And like each team based on the uh, tribal cares, they select, their objectives and then their key results. So um, that's the important part. Like we do, we actually track quarterly OKRs and we according to aligned to for each of the quarters like product strategy. And what we do is like we list problems, not projects. And like the, this is the important part. Like you need to focus on the target metrics that you want to achieve at the end of the quarter, and you need to list the problems they come up with problems that are actually an obstacle on the way to achieve these goals so but unfortunately in most of the companies and including me in the past like it's most of, mostly like a bunch of projects uh, listed uh, under the backlog uh, so the second part is like also like you need to convince your teammates that doing like they are something that they are doing something valuable so in order to do this one of the things uh, that is really highly valuable is that each of the items in the backlog should contribute to these goals that you defined for this quarter in the OKRs. And it will be great if you can link each item 
bit of OKRs so that like people will know why they are building this one. And I know that it may not be easy for like linking each item with OKRs. There may be some small tasks, there may be some other stuff unrelated, but it's good to keep that in mind as a, as a goal. And as you can see in here, like there is this uh, screenshot of Simon Sinek's uh, famous uh, speech. I'm not going to open that video. Don't worry. Like this is the this will not be a like, presentation that for the millionth time that people are seeing this video. So, uh, uh, but like if you're not familiar, uh, we will share the slides uh, afterwards so that you can take a look at. And you need to start with why. Like each time while you're talking with the team, while you are like preparing for something, you need to. Uh, explain the motivation behind why we are doing this, why we want this, uh, why we want to overcome this problem, and show them numbers, like show them stats that are supporting this, uh, so that, so that they will be more convinced about that. Don't have a pile of random items in the backlog. So, uh, second question, uh, it's a tricky one. Like, is this really the agile way? Like, are we really doing agile, or is it waterfall dressed up as agile? I'm saying this because, like, mostly, like. Uh, we tend to say that we are working in uh, we are working agile, uh, we are like, following agile practices, but is it really like that? I doubt it. Like most of the scrum teams normally apply, like they tend to apply the, a mini waterfall inside the scrums, uh, in scrum sprints. So like most of the teams, like we, uh, if the product manager does the requirements work, uh, he, the product manager brings up the requirements, the designer starts to work on that requirements and those requirements and prepares the designs and that can raise the artifacts and they are presented to, handed off to the developers for development and test. Um, for like, of course, like you can do some like uh, grooming or some meetings, but in most of the cases, developers are not involved in product discovery or design processes much. Normally the solutions are presented to them, like not the problems. So, uh, well, in order to overcome this problem, what do we do? Like, I think this is a good way of doing it. And this is a great concept, in my opinion. Like, we are applying, applying a call, concept called dual track scrum. And, and what does dual track scrum is? Basically, we are running two con concurrent sprints. One of them is the discovery sprint, and the second one is the delivery sprint. And the delivery sprint is trivial. Like, this is the sprint uh, that you normally do, like develop stuff. The discovery sprint is something new. Like, normally, like, uh, we design, uh, we design one sprint ahead of the development. Like we talk about the concept and the initiate the problem and uh, stuff. Like uh, what in, in reality, like when we, we first design in one sprint and then in the second sprint, we both uh, develop this, this uh, former design that we had. And at the same time, we are working on the design for the next sprint to come. So this is the call to discovery track part. And it's also, also known as uh, the double diamond. The double diamond methodology. Um, the double diamond methodology is a great, but is a great uh, design thinking uh, method methodology that which actually uh, encourages people to, especially the developers, into the uh, execution and design. So what do we do? Like in here, like in the double diamond methodology, the idea is to first define, like understand the problem, define the problem, and like. Uh, increase the possibilities and have a, have a broad approach and then narrow it down, talk with the team, come up with a vision and plan, and then like explore the opportunities and then uh, execute the solution. So like, as you can see in here, it starts uh, with a brief of the problem. In reality, how we do it, now we're doing it, we, in each of the sprint plannings, we are uh, like first introducing the problem and then and um, in the first week of the sprint, uh, most of the time, like uh, the designer takes the, takes the mission like, to lead the solution and the designer uh, has herself like starts the, uh, the research with me, like with the product managers and the BI people, we are working on the uh, user stories. And sometimes like we are doing some uh, brainstorming with the teams, with the, including the developers and other, uh, other sources. And at the end of the first week, we uh, come up with a, like we come up with a uh, possible solution to the problem in the refinement meeting. In the refinement meeting, uh, the, the, the developers, all the members of the team actually like see the like, first uh, drafts of the solution and they have the opportunity to comment on and to like challenge the problem, to challenge the solution and also to shape the ideas and design. Like 
they also like help us split the solutions so that like maybe maybe there may be more than one uh, solutions for these uh, problems also they may be uh, comment recommending some, some of the things and then the designer the, takes these uh, takes these feedbacks and then like, sometimes we do the guerrilla testing sometimes we do pro prototyping sometimes we just like we don't do this stuff sometimes we just ship and start working on it but the idea is to validate our uh, proper solutions, uh, proposed solutions for this one. And then we have a pre-planning meeting uh, through the end of the sprint in which we really, really like uh, discuss the solutions in detail. And, uh, and as an outcome of the pre-planning, each of the tasks should be defined, like it should be divided into uh, subtasks or uh, if it's an epic into stories. And like by sprint planning, we should have a clear backlog of tasks that uh, have story points assigned to each of them and the, uh, the solution should be defined right away and yes like we all of these tasks are uh, estimated before sprint planning which i will come to that part later yes this is the other question that we have does this planning sprint planning meeting take too long well uh yeah, it's the thing that I want to like share. I think it's different from like most of the scrum practices. So um, as you see in here, like I will come back a little bit. As you see in here, normally like in the team refinement meeting and the pre-planning meetings, normally we have these discussions. Like if like these meetings are really, really important. That's the part the developers should ask every tiny detail that they have about the problem or solution. And after that, they have time to, to really think about this. And this is normally not the meetings. Like uh, normally in the people, when people become more creative or more focused outside of the meetings. So what do we do? Like instead in here, uh, first of all, like the best sprint planning is the shortest one, like definitely. And normally our, in our calendar, the dedicated time for sprint planning is 45 minutes. And we, our record is like, the best record is 20 minutes, I guess. And uh, for example, the last uh, in the last sprint planning, we just spent 30 minutes, and like the first 10 minutes was just chit chatting, and at the beginning. Uh, well, this makes the sprint planning the least imp important meeting, but uh, meeting, but that does not make the sprint planning concept as the least important, because like before coming into the sprint planning, after the pre planning and all the meetings, the developers sometimes themselves, sometimes together with uh, the other developers, they work on uh, the estimations and other stuff. We can also do, uh, do this in a better way because like, as you've seen, uh, as you saw in the, uh, at the beginning, we have like different actually multiple teams inside the team, like Android developers, iOS developers, backend developers. So, uh, so that like, well, for example, right now I have, a one, I have one Android developer in my team, so he doesn't need to have a like, separate meeting for that one. He just, uh, estimates these and that's why like we don't do sprint poppers but if they want to uh, do it they can do it but uh, normally uh, we don't do these in sprint learnings and um, also like one of the things like when we all, all do, do these things yeah, properly the sprint planning just becomes like the listing items like closing the previous sprint starting a new sprint and like adding the uh, items according to the velocity and like setting a sprint goal um by the way like one of the things that uh, is different like we don't like keep complex velocity calculations like everyone has more or less some uh, velocity in their minds about like whether it's backend under android or ios so uh, we just it just makes it simpler in the past i have worked in like, companies where we have this like complex calculations in large excel sheets so this is kind of uh complex i would say and um, well, like the downside of it, like in the past also, we, we, did, we did these things, like uh, you shouldn't be, in my opinion, like taking these planning meetings too long. Normally this like, classic Scrum framework says like it's four hours for a two week sprint or so, as far as I remember. Uh, but people cannot pay attention in a long meeting like that. And they, everybody gets tired and bored, the people lose motivation, especially engineers, because like the, the uh, you know, like, I haven't met an engineer that likes meetings. 
So they are running in a different schedule. I, uh, there is a great article about that one if you are not familiar with this concept, but uh, called maker schedule, manager schedule. Uh, they are completely working in a different uh, setup. So like when you really uh, have these long meetings, in, it's a waste of time mostly. Um, but you can find some way, find some other ways to actually have these, like, uh, spend these hours on the estimations and on the plannings outside of the meetings. And the last one, how are we going to set the goal, set a sprint goal and push the team further? Like uh, the biggest dilemma of product managers. You are the product manager, you want uh, execution, you want results, but you don't have the power. So there, what is the proper way to do it? It's a tricky business. First of all, how do we push the team further? Don't push. Uh, actually, I selected this uh, image on purpose, this video, small video on purpose. Uh, it's a scene from the famous movie Ben Hur. And like, normally they are like using the whips to like, uh, make the slaves work and stuff. And in after one of our sprint plannings in, in the past in the former companies, one of the engineers in the team shared this video actually afterwards mocking us, of course, like the product managers. Uh, I think this is hilarious. This is funny. And this is a like, uh, uh, this is a obvious uh, very uh, sign of like we are doing something wrong. So uh, I recommend as a product manager, don't like, push the team yourself that much. Let someone from an engineer do it. Like let's like the best way is for them like uh, to to have the motivation from themselves. I'm not that much uh, buying the like self-organizing concept because the uh, but I know that this is the ideal version, but in reality, I actually I didn't see that happen that much because the personalities are, are different, and also like people don't want. Also, people are sometimes scared. This uh, the, the the trust relationships is also important, but like uh, especially like if you are, have someone from the engineering in, in, that can be an engineering lead, and in this case, like we have the engineering manager, the scrum master. Uh, it's always like more efficient if they do it themselves. And like, for example, my engineering manager, he's a really good one, by the way, at his job. Like uh, he really likes to talk and knows how to talk with the engineers and so on. Uh, we are doing some kind of a good cop, bad cop scene in there. I'm being the good cop. I'm not like taking any responsibility for this. I am not pushing them, but we find nice ways to do it uh, from the engineering perspective. So that also like, uh, keeps uh, keeps us away from having like two different silos, two different teams. We are one team working on the same thing. And finally, sprint call. Like you said, uh, the items in your backlog. You suddenly you, you created your sprint backlog. Okay, what will be the sprint call? Like the sprint call is like the sprint call cannot be something uh, like okay, let's finish all the tasks in the sprint. Uh, the sprint call means that. Uh, you can work on multiple teams in this uh, in the sprint, but the sprint goal should be that uh, something, well, one goal that would increase the collaboration inside the team. What do I mean that in that? Like, it happens pretty, very frequently among, for, for us. Like, um, no, as you say, uh, as you see, like we have the iOS and Android developers. Sometimes uh, we develop something in iOS faster. Sometimes like the Android goes faster. Uh, the Android, uh, the iOS is lagging back. Sometimes we develop something for just one platform. So at the same sprint, we cannot have uh, the same goal every time. It's a challenge for me also. But what does that mean? Like, for example, if it's, what we do is we set, like, we set different goals uh, for different parts of the team. Uh, but the most important one becomes a common goal for the whole team. So even though like this developer is working on, for example, if we set a goal for Android, like uh, to set the common goal as the project that the Android developer is working on. In this case, uh, if there is a need for a QA, for example, the QA engineer is too busy at that time, the iOS developer can take the work from there, can, they can collaborate. Or if there is a dependency on backend, like uh, the backend engineer can drop everything that he does and he can focus on uh, the Android engineer's backend related task so that uh, we will go fast, faster. So what we do is like we select, uh, we set these like multiple goals for design, for iOS and Android uh, developers, backend, DevOps, each of them, and set the most important one as a team goal most of the time. If you're lucky, we'll have a common goal. And okay, how are we going to select the most important one? 
I'm, uh, I've recommended you to look back at the first, uh, at the beginning of the presentation. You need to select uh, the most important one according to that fits your strategy very well, that fits your OKRs. So this is how you're going to achieve. If you don't have that, like it's too late, like we have some other problems. Actually, these are the things that I have right now, for now. So it'd be great if you, uh, if you, if you have any questions, I'll be willing to answer and discuss more. Thank you so much, Meli, for being here, sharing your experiences. It worked a lot. We have um, a few questions, actually. And I guess we have five minutes to be on track. We can, of course, expand it a bit. Um, so um, if anyone can help me on reading these, maybe Mike, you can, you can help. Okay. Um, so let's start with the first question from Mustafa. Um, what, what is the period of the objective you set as a company for a one year, for a six month? And the, another question is that when did let go apply this methodology from the beginning? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, we apply quarterly objectives. Of course, the like every like every uh, company, the company itself has a financial year, financial goals, and like also strategic goals for each calendar year. Uh, but like we actually divide these uh, goals uh, in uh, three months of periods, the quarterly periods. So at the beginning of each quarter, we we set new objectives. Sometimes they, they will they we follow the same ones, but from the previous quarter. And were we doing it since the beginning? No, at the beginning, like I wasn't there. Also, like in 2015, Let Go was a small startup, just like like most of the startups, like uh, 10 people, 15 people around the same table sometimes, like working on this together. And by the time I joined the company at the end of 2019, and it was uh, well established it was starting to become well established i guess uh because like by the time i joined like the company was around like 200 people so that's why like they were also trying to apply these uh, improve their processes as well uh by the way like it wasn't uh, what i heard from my friends like it wasn't like this at the beginning there were like large excel sheets that like they were tracking the the status of each like projects and so on and hopefully I wasn't here at that time and it was good. <laughs> uh, okay, that was good, thank you. And uh, actually, I'm sorry, I missed the first question actually. It, it was uh, from ML and she said, is it difficult to work without the uh, user researchers? As the PM, you are also taking a user research responsibilities. Uh, well, we are not using as uh, we are not working as user researchers, but like uh, we are working with user researchers, by the way. And we have a user research team in the US, and we have we are using outsourced resources in Turkey, outsourcing the user research efforts. But of course, like uh, it's not perfect as always. And the thing is, right, uh, the first and foremost, the most important thing is our designers are product designers. That's the kind of concept that I wanted to. Uh, bring to all the teams that I worked in Turkey, like the people from Imdachet may remember that. And like we don't have UX designer, we don't have UI designer, these are product designers. They also need to have, they need to own the product, they should have the, these capabilities. And also from my side, my position is a little bit different also in Letco. I'm the only Turkish uh, product manager. I'm the only Turkish member in the overall product. We have developers, but I'm the only product manager. So that actually uh, puts uh, some other burdens on my shoulder as well that I am like sharing some like sources that they are not aware of like Exusosic or like I'm sometimes share some uh, share some comments from the app store reviews etc so uh, I'm also like getting lots of feedbacks from people around me like uh, all the time people report me bugs and some something from whatsapp so I'm also taking I'm very very uh, familiar with these kind of things and um, but I think it's uh, it, it doesn't take a lot of time for me. It's still fun. Like when I first joined Let Go, I was waiting for my work permit for two months. I started in the Istanbul office for a while. And at that time, for example, I visited some car dealers offices just to have a chat and so on. So uh, this is the kind of concept that we are familiar. 
Okay then, thank you. Uh, one more uh, from Jihan Bolavan, and he said, "How do you reflect your experience knowledge about sprint planning for a small size startup, and what would be your recommendation and key areas to focus?" Um, well, it's quite normal. Like we, the, when I show the team, like probably some of you say and thought like, "Oh, like he has." A lot of engineers in his team like I know that in most of the startups like you don't have this size of a team like in, sometimes three or four like the, sometimes the whole team is well, the whole company is like that like three or four people so um, I think still like the most relevant parts are the like first two questions like are we doing the right thing are the people motivated so uh, I know it's not the product managers job but like you should push for definitely having a proper strategy and if you can manage it's really hard to get that, by the way, especially in Turkey. Uh, but uh, if you manage to have it, then you should find a way at least to relate all the things that you do into, uh, into these things that projects that you're working on and you try to motivate the engineers as much as you can. Try to empower them, try to come up with their own solutions so that they can feel that they are the part of the company. They are not some outsource uh, software house that they are working on that to, to just build projects. They are actually a part of the company. I think that's the most important part. Yeah, great. And one more from Reshat, and he asks, how do you prioritize the backlog? Well, this is, by the way, this is one of the things that I also really was, uh, was curious about in the past. And I spent a lot of time like thinking about it and so on. The thing is, Prioritization should not be that much of an issue. And uh, we are actually over, overthinking the prioritization in Turkey. And that's why I'm like just saying like strategy, strategy, strategy. Once you have the strategy, once you have a like uh, once you have a list of products that to work on, prioritization does not become so important. And if there is a, a from my past experience, so if there is like a really heated discussion about the prior session for the whole team for the Hong Kong company and uh, that's that means that there's something wrong really wrong about that whole company like uh, because like it's sometimes and most of the times it's really incredibly hard to prioritize these items if they are from different uh, parts of the product or from different perspectives so uh, for example there is a great example of a company company which I don't I don't remember which was a Pandora or one of them. They, for example, they um, they've had a like they were like bragging about uh, their product, a prioritization strategy, and so on. Like they were really uh, saying that they were using novel strategies, but in the end, they didn't, they were not successful, and because because they were not able to execute the strategy. Prioritization is not strategy. Uh, prioritization does not mean that you are working on the most important thing. And that's the overall problem that we have all the time. Okay, then. So we are taking the last question, which is from Fulia Özdemir. And she asks, do QA engineers have a separate time for testing? Do they have another sprint just for testing or testing parallel during the execution sprint? No, we are testing in the execution sprint. And the bad thing for us is that we cannot see the, we cannot launch during the sprint. So since we are uh, operating, uh, we are uh, operating on mobile apps, uh, like the, our, most of our goals are like merging the code and re making it ready to submit into stores. So it takes, as you know, like it takes a while for, to see your uh, code in the stores. So we have these <clears throat> release trains. There are multiple teams working on the same app so like we have these release trains, like everything is tested and merged, and then like there, there are regression tests, and then they, uh, we execute them. Um, okay, I guess since we are a bit uh, exceeded our time, it's better if we can uh, stop and give a break. Uh, if you have any further questions to Meli, you can of course reach out to him. Of course, um, every time. Yeah, um, so we will be having a five minutes break, I guess, if you can uh, come over at 55.
that will be great so that we can continue with Jem. Um, see you soon.
Hello everyone, it's me again. Um, I think we are ready to continue. Uh, before we start with Jen, um, I would like you to uh, check the chat so that you can see our link for uh, the survey around the sprint planning. We will be sharing its results and it's important to get more numbers in order to get some uh, insightful information, let's say. Um, it will not take that much, so if you can uh, contribute, uh, we would be glad. Um, now, if uh, Jem is here, and I mm. guess he's yes, here. Yes, I'm here. Hey all. Um, we can continue for your session. Yes, Where let me on? share my screen first. Uh, I guess everyone can see my screen. Yes, uh, hey again. Uh, this is Jem. Firstly, thanks Meli for amazing presentation. Uh, today, in my turn, I'll try to answer some basic but common questions we receive and uh, some pain points we experienced or we got from the different product managers. So I will try to focus more on sprint planning and grooming instead of looking at other parts of the product ownership. Uh, let me introduce things by uh, let me start introducing myself. Uh, I started my career as a business analyst and I moved to product management. Uh, since we got this question too many times, I wanted to answer that. Uh, there is not a definite career path for product management. Uh, I believe the skill sets and I believe the domain knowledge uh, for some specific areas so everyone can be a product manager. A uh, common question we got, as I mentioned, uh, difference between a product owner and product manager. Uh, this could be very uh, unnecessary or silly question for all of you if you are working in a, a tech company as a product owner or product manager. But since we saw some people who are not the product manager in this meeting, I want to explain that. Product owner is a role uh, on the Scrum team. So Scrum teams needs a person who manage the backlog, prioritize the tasks or uh, for other things. So everyone can be a product owner. It could be a product manager. It could be a CEO. It could be a founder of the company. If you are working in a company of five people, uh, since um, in the last days, uh, tech companies, uh, prefer hiring product manager and gives uh, other responsibilities to, to them. Uh, generally, there's a confusion uh, in some companies and I'm seeing some positions uh, that opened with uh, wrong requirements. So we want to go through it together. So answer is for the second question, of course, product owner, but you, uh, product manager at the same time if you are working as a product owner. Uh, this is our takeaway. Product manager is a title. Product owner is a role on the Scrum team. Uh, our calendar of a product manager at Udemy, uh, actually, this is very similar to Let's Go. Uh, company defines some um, mission, vision, or strategy according to that year. And as a product team, we are trying to be aligned with their mission. And we set our KRs, OKRs, uh, quarterly. Uh, and according to that uh, quarter's care, we are trying to define our projects, our product improvement areas, and we run sprint uh, bi-weekly. Uh, and in that sprint, of course, we work towards goal. Uh, another thing here is uh, there is no strict rule in any company, and you can change your strategy, your vision anytime. Uh, again, very similar to Mali, uh, you need to focus on your strategy, you can change your uh, prioritization or products anytime. Uh, before we begin to sprint planning, uh, another important area, uh, product manager is a facilitative leader. Uh, I know the pressure over you comes from the stakeholders, comes from the executive team, comes from the, your managers about the deadlines, about the output of each sprint, but you are not a manager of uh, the scrum team, so you shouldn't act like that. Uh, you shouldn't reflect your pressure to them. So uh, you need to work as a team with them. So this is really important. 
uh, normally, since we are not talking about the uh, sprint planning uh, from Scrum Master's perspective, I will not uh, talk about everything, but as a product owner, you can uh, talk some points with your team or Scrum Master or engineering manager. Uh, so before each sprint, you need to learn the available resource from your team. In my previous experiences, uh, those teams were preferring work with daily base or hourly base capacity. We will uh, work through. Uh, we will walk through uh, scoring uh, in the next slides. But uh, in this process, when they uh, gave uh, capacity uh, with daily or hourly base. Uh, they are trying to give uh, a score with hourly and daily again. So we saw some pain points there. Uh, today, you may have uh, too many different software engineers at different levels. It means they will work in different speeds, at different speeds. So when someone goes to uh, PTO holiday, it's really hard to calculate your next sprint capacity. Uh, in addition to that, Every team, every Scrum team uh, improves and every Scrum team uh, accelerates their tempo. Uh, in that case, if you are working with daily or hourly capacity, you will not be able to calculate next card's uh, score because today you may want to give uh, one day for a card that you gave uh, two days in the past. So this is important to use uh, velocity uh, in my opinion so by the way this is not uh, an unorthodox method this is the best practice for each team uh, for the last year so again uh, capacity determination is not the responsibility of yours as a product owner uh, I'm just sharing this uh, to give you that opportunity to share your opinion with the team uh, what are we using today uh, velocity uh, we are looking last three, four, five according to team sprints uh, to understand our velocity. Velocity means uh, how many points we burn in one day. Uh, so you can look at your availability before each sprint or actually the team needs, it needs to come to you before each sprint with this availability. You shouldn't be part of this area. Uh, when they share their availability according to national holiday, according to uh, their uh, plans about uh, uh, being off, uh, you can share the, your uh, total availability. Uh, what's the pain point here and how uh, are we solving it? Um, as a product owner, you can know your area very well. You can know all the system very well. Um, generally, uh, product managers uh, don't. Uh, so team can come to you. Uh, with some projects about st stabilization. Stabilization means some refactoring projects, some uh, verification projects, uh, some other things about the engineering like scalability. So we found a way uh, to divide this uh, availability among us. Uh, as a product owner, I'm using 60% of that availability for feature-based uh, projects. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this is not very strict, strict rule. Uh, you may have some projects have a very strict deadline because of law, because of some regulations, because of other things. Uh, in that case, you can talk with the team. Negotiation is the best word here. You can talk with the team to increase your availability percentage to 80 to 100%. It doesn't matter. And sometimes you can make uh, some sacrifices for your team. You can decrease your availability as a product owner or sometimes you can run only bug sprints. So all of them can be done. Uh, what's our stage now? We uh, created our uh, user stories. Uh, everything is done as a product owner and team gave the capability uh, and the capacity to us uh, through availability. And now we will uh, actually talk about the card and we will plan it. So I will approach grooming and planning as a bundle since we are uh, making one meeting for them. Uh, the main problem is uh, I experienced in the past uh, not considering all stakes. So for example, when you come to an engineer, uh, they are giving a point to you as a, as that, uh, for that card. So here is an example. Uh, they are thinking about the technical design. They will make some meetings and one of them will uh, 
code and make a test on his site and they are saying that three and five points but generally uh, when they complete the code they are sending it to another uh, maybe generally senior engineers and when they make a comment about the code uh, engineer is starting again and sending it uh, to code review again and end of the day they need to make some configurations for release they are working on release so as a product owner you need to explain your uh, needs very well so for example on my site i'm saying that when i want to uh, send one code block to a product you cannot say anything i don't want to hear any excuse about the release configurations or other things so uh, as a takeaway, please specify your definition of the done criteria. Uh, by the way, this is for all inclusive teams uh, in Udemy. Uh, our Scrum team is doing all of these. Uh, if you have a DevOps team in your company, you don't have to think about the release. Or if you are working in a development agency, uh, most likely you will send the code component to your um, client and they will release it so you don't have to think it again. So the, the, the main here, the, the main focus here is uh, to consider everything uh, as a product owner. So another pain point about the grooming and planning, uh, I'm hearing that our team can estimate the effort of the bugs, uh, what should we do uh, to give that um, numbers very well no you 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 can't uh, it's it's really hard to understand before entering the code so generally as a product owner i'm dividing the bugs to two subtasks so first subtask includes find the reason decide the solution and estimate the effort for solution phases and let's say we gave two points and engineer found the bug and if that solution is really simple they can handle in that card but they can say this is too big to handle in uh, this point. Uh, in that case, as a product owner, you should decide whether to attack uh, that card, of course, by deprioritizing another card because of the uh, availability of the team. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, when you see a bug, you want to uh, productize that. I saw this bug. Uh, I, want, I don't want to solve this bug uh, with a patchy work, I want to productize that with a new feature or with a new improvement. In that case, you can uh, scope out that and you can wait uh, till next sprint. It's totally up to you. Uh, actually, the, the, this question uh, also was in Melis' presentation. Uh, tasks are taking longer, I guess, uh, there was. Uh, so, as a product owner, uh, as I mentioned, you shouldn't talk about the tasks uh, duration and other things as a manager, but uh, to help them, uh, I'm using spike cards. So let's say you have a product in your mind, you have a feature or improving area on your mind, and you want to bring that in the common sprints. So you can uh, open a spike card if you have a slot in the current sprint, and the team can look at the system, look at the uh, code, look at the new technology to learn that. So, so the only goal of this card uh, is research. Uh, it could be a new technology or as I mentioned, let's say uh, you will work with a third party and they have an API. Uh, you need to use that uh, for the next uh, project. You can open a spike card to review that API and the team can understand everything that API. So that's the spike card. Uh, another pain point, uh, bugs or important tasks always come uh, while we are running a sprint. So yes, we are making some prioritization, uh, we are making some uh, other backlog uh, rules on our mind and we are defining all of them. But yes, it could be every time. Uh, the theoretical answer is no. Normally, according to Scrum Guide, you should lock the sprint and you shouldn't change sprint backlog. But uh, when I uh, ask this to other product manager or when I experience that, this is not possible. I know that. So uh, again, the biggest word here is the negotiation. Uh, you can talk with your team. You can explain why you need to bring a new card to sprint and why you need to change the sprint backlog uh, middle of the sprint. Uh, 
so this is the important part. Uh, but as a product owner, you uh, may also feel unclear about the uh, that card. Uh, should I bring that or should I should I wait? So before each sprint, and generally, I don't see uh, this in most of the teams. Uh, as a product owner, you can set a sprint goal and you can share that sprint goal with the team. So when you feel uh, unclear about uh, a card, you can look at uh, your sprint goal. For example, you are working another team. You are in a you are in a project includes uh, cross team. So you you need to give uh, some APIs uh, documentation or really code to another team. In that case, when you feel unclear about the bug or another thing, you can look at uh, your sprint goal and you can say that no, I need to complete this, and you can make another negotiation with stakeholders or support team or other teams for the new card. Uh, another thing, uh, meeting duration. Uh, so this is really important because, uh, for example, we are running two weeks uh, as sprint. So when you make a very long meeting, actually you are spending your time from your sprint. So it affects everything about your uh, efficiency about your availability ab about your completion rates uh, once i heard that one team makes a meeting uh, makes a grooming and planning meeting with uh, six hours so it's it's too long uh, it's almost one day uh, so for this uh, generally problem is unexpected situations when uh, uh, when you bring a car to grooming a uh, team is trying to understand that and team is trying to give a score uh, to that uh, in order not to make any underestimate. Uh, so because of that reason, you can set regular pre-grooming, pre-refining meetings. Uh, what is this? Uh, in this meeting, you can share your uh, next projects you want to bring. And you don't have to give any score. Uh, you don't have to get any uh, sizing from the team. Maybe they can give some t-shirt size, like small, medium, or large. But in this meeting, the main goal is to explain yourself to other team, uh, to, to other members of the team. And in addition to that, it will also uh, help you to understand your card's uh, situation. There may... Uh, the, 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 maybe there are some uh, pain points or missing areas on your cards. In that case, you can improve yourself. In, in, in that case, you can improve your cards very well. So with these grooming and uh, pre-grooming -pre meetings, uh, you will ensure one thing. At the grooming meeting, uh, team members will not face with any cards that they haven't heard before. Uh, so it will be easier for everyone. Uh, another important topic here, uh, since I heard that too many times, uh, differences between grooming and refinement, uh, there is nothing. Uh, they are exactly the same term. Uh, I guess it was in 2013 or 14, uh, Scrum Guide uh, changed the name of it. They called uh, refinement instead of grooming. So they, they are the same thing. Uh, in addition to that, before completing the presentation, uh, I didn't add any resources here. I can add if we share the presentation, we talk with uh, the Begum. Uh, but uh, my suggestion is that you need to really, uh, you need to uh, review Scrum Guide and Agile Manifesto carefully because uh, most likely uh, there are too many things you think of it uh, is already done by themselves. So you don't have to invent the hill again and again for the best practices. In addition to that, uh, my habit is uh, to care about uh, worst cases instead of best cases, uh, because with this way, with this way, uh, you can understand what you shouldn't do. Uh, so my uh, keyword is anti-pattern. Generally, when I uh, look at any new thing to learn about, uh, I'm using anti-pattern. For example, if you search sprint planning anti-pattern, you will see too many problems people faced and with this way, uh, you may avoid uh, doing that again and again. So thank you.
uh, I can answer the questions if you have. Thank you, Jam. I think we have one. Um, I can help you with that. Um, Elif Bektuzun is asking, how do you plan big changes in product, like rewriting modules or creating new modules? Grooming meetings is enough for these big plans or not? Uh, no, generally uh, isn't enough. Uh, as a product manager, you can always be in touch with your uh, team members. So when I think about the big change in product or rewriting a model, uh, generally I'm asking for five minutes or 10 minutes uh, with uh, different engineers in the team. And uh, according to their feedbacks, I can improve myself or my product uh, by myself. So I'm, I'm going to grooming after those meetings. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? If you would like to ask your question using your microphone, that would be also okay. Uh, we can wait for a while. Okay, I guess that's it. Yeah. If you have any further questions, you can also reach to Jem over LinkedIn, or maybe he can share his email on his presentation. Uh, yeah, yeah, we will be sharing the presentations, by the way, um, soon, once we uh, finish this event first. Um, I would like to thank again, everyone, to, for being here. Uh, to Jem and Meli, thank you for speaking up your uh, knowledge. It was very meaningful. We, we don't have that much sources uh, that, are mentioning your uh, presentations actually they they are mostly around like theoretical stuff and they don't touch the real life so it, it was really great to hear something that is actually happening and it is from your actual experience so it meant a lot and thank you thanks to everyone for being here we are very we were very crowded that that was one of my uh, biggest webinars i have seen like the number of People were pretty much. Um, I guess that was a good start. Um, also, Iram just shared our feedback form. If you can give us feedback, and our speakers would also like like to know uh, how they how they did, how uh, which ways they can improve themselves. It would be great for both of us. So, if you can just share a few minutes of your time, uh, it would be great. Mm, thank you so much. Um, I will be uh, closing our event. Um, if you want to talk about something, uh, of course we can, but I guess we don't have any. So, <laughs> See you soon. thank you so Perfect. much. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Roger. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.